blah. I'm Dan Lee. If I go by Fig, I'm a former Air Force fighter pilot and blah, blah, blah. But most importantly, at least right now, I'm the host of Figments. And even more importantly, this is it, folks. The final episode of Figments, the power of imagination on Think Tech Hawaii. The final episode, holy moly, of how many? Counting Figments on Reality, which I did for a while, over the past two plus years, I've done 62 episodes. That's kind of shocking to me. You can find them all on the playlists. I'll give you QR codes for those at the end of the episode. And it has been a blast. I've learned a lot. I've been reminded of how lucky I've been to have my experiences, but even more to know the people I've gotten to know. Uh, I just don't have the capacity to do it anymore. And um, so I'm going to do other things, make other things the priority. I will miss this. I will not miss the preparation because maybe some people can pull this out of their back pocket. But for me, it's a lot of work to try to do things right. And of course, I wanted to do that. Before I go any further, I do have to thank the Think Tech Hawaii, a great nonprofit led by Jay Fidel, who enables citizen journalists like me to, to put their ideas, thoughts, friends, whatever, forward. And um, they've got a great show. Let's go to uh, Think Tech Hawaii on the web. You can find all of the shows there refreshed every day. Uh, and uh, it's a, it is a remarkable organization. I'd also uh, encourage you to consider supporting them financially because that's what keeps them afloat. But they've been great to work with. All of the engineers and other facilitators that I've worked with are awesome. I'm working with Ash today, uh, but but they make this a very professional endeavor on a pretty low budget, and I appreciate their work, and I'll miss working with them. So what was Figments? If you're tuning in for some reason to the last episode as your first episode, what was the idea? Well, I had been interviewed by Jay on several Figments episodes way back to when I was the director of the Daniel K. Daniel K. Inouye Asia Pacific Center for Security Studies. And after that, and uh, I thought, you know, I can do that. And I could with their help, with a lot of their help. And my notion was to present Figments based on my nickname, Fig, but Figments as Things that were born from somewhat fanciful ideas, because uh, figments, while they have a sort of a negative connotation, really every great achievement idea starts as just a seed as a figment. And so that's what I did. My first, it started with my story, because I have stories, and uh, it was an easy one to tell, because I knew it, I'd lived it, about being a fighter pilot. But more importantly, about how I was able to become an Air Force fighter pilot, despite having color vision deficiency, or as it's often inaccurately labeled, being colorblind. So if you go to episode one, that was the first one. And then throughout the course of Figments, I spent a lot of time talking with, with friends and acquaintances, some of whom I made through some of the acquaintances I made through Figments. Uh, who had similar experiences in combat as fighter pilots in the Air Force or in the Army on the ground, and uh, sharing their perspective in their stories. And I'd like to start looking back on that first by uh, acknowledging um, CB uh, Long. Uh, CB was one of my episode, one of my guests on a, a episode about close air support forward air control, uh, providing air support to the Army. And uh, that's his buddy, Guy Gruders, who uh, flew the airplanes. But CB, if we go back one slide, uh, was a ground technician, radio operator, maintainer, and driver. CB is hospitalized in the Phoenix area right now after a serious cardiac incident. He's recovering. I spoke to him yesterday. He's a great guy, a friend of a family that's a friend of the, the network that we build as members of the military. So, CB, I hope you're watching. Think of you often. You're in our prayers and uh, get well soon. And then we did, uh, through CB, I met Guy Gruders and heard his amazing story about being shot down twice and serving as a prisoner of war, serving as a prisoner of war. 
that led me to my next Vietnam for, uh, veteran friend, somebody I'd flown F-15s with, shown here, and that's Greg Slick Aguirre. Slick was one of the best F-15 pilots ever. He then flew for Southwest Airlines uh, and uh, still flies today. He's slightly older than me. But he began his military life as a Huey helicopter pilot in Vietnam. Folks, if I were to say watch one military episode, related episode of Figments, that's the one. Uh, because he does talk about his life of flying helicopters, fighter jets with the airlines. But it's his story of helicopter combat in Vietnam that you'll find particularly moving. Uh, again, a great friend and a, a great guy. Um, so then I got to my own combat friend, guy who worked for me in combat, and his name is Dave Goldfein, um, Fingers. And Fingers Goldfein would later be the chief of staff of the Air Force. But while he worked for me as uh, the commander of the world famous and highly respected Triple Nickel, America's greatest fighter squadron, Fingers was uh, shot down and rescued in, during the Kosovo War. Operation Allied Force. That's not the story he told, and he, his was the second episode and kind of the quintessential figment, because he tells how he got excused, if you will, from the Air Force Academy between his sophomore and junior year to be a roadie in a rock band. There's much more to that episode than that, and that's another good one to watch. I hope they're all good ones to watch. Um, but I really like that one. Figures one of the funniest guys ever, a great uh, fighter pilot and a real hero, a real hero. But it wasn't just military folks that I talked to. Um, I also talked to some of the remarkable people I've worked with on other matters, like the fantastic doctor. There's there's fingers there uh, right after he's been rescued and a humorous little plaque. Let me regret, uh, digress a bit where I told him that when I had been the nickel commander, I, I didn't get shot down after he was shot down and rescued. Of course, I was the nickel commander in peacetime, so there's the reason for that. But other people, not warriors, uh, at least not warriors in uniform that I worked with, um, included the great Dr. Ala Marabit, who's been a partner in women, peace, and security endeavors with me. Uh, who has just Google her name or watched the episode, uh, one of the most remarkable folks I've ever known. And I shared some time with her on Figments. Go look at it. And then uh, also had a chance to have on the show uh, Susan Helms, who is one of my mentors in the Air Force. She was a bit younger than me, a colonel when I was a three-star, but she taught me about space when I was the vice commander at Air Force Space Command. And how could she do that? Well, she was an astronaut. That's how. And um, an astronaut who came back to the Air Force from NASA, not, not a common uh, endeavor, a bit of a, another figment, to be a three-star general herself. And uh, again, the, one of the remarkable folks that I've gotten to know. After, in addition, I got to uh, have a show with Somebody I met long ago at a conference at Naval War College, the esteemed Dr. Oriana Mastro, who is, I submit, the best scholar on national security matters with regard to China, People's Republic of China, period. Oriana is brilliant, focused, uh, an incredibly big head, big, not head, brain for capturing and understanding details. And um, I got to know her and helped her get in the Air Force. I take some credit for that. But if you want to know what you should learn about Chinese global ambitions and how you should think about uh, the US-China uh, relationship, you could say rivalry right now, read, read what Oriana has written or see what she has said, because she's remarkable. So these were all serious topics. I had a session in one show on leadership with the best leader I've ever known and one of my favorite people on the whole planet. And uh, I hope you'll go back and look at this one. I am going to give you the QR code. This is my daughter, Yating Leaf. And on the right, you can she, see she led me to run a marathon. And those who know me know that's it. That's one of the most incredible leadership accomplishments ever. 
She was an Air Force lieutenant, uh, served in the Air Force as an intelligence officer for six years. But most importantly, now she works in industry for Google at this time and, and is a true le- expert on leadership. And I rewatch that episode sometimes to think about what I'm doing, how I'm leading in any environment, because we all have a chance to lead. That's a good time to say, well, what have I learned from doing figments? Because I have learned a lot. It's been refreshing for an old guy, and I am an old guy, to have to put my ideas forward on camera for 28-ish minutes uh, in a coherent way while conducting a conversation with people who are invariably smarter and more knowledgeable than I am. That that brain stretching has been exceptionally valuable, and that's been manifested mostly in the writing that I do, and I do quite a bit of writing. Um, I've also been reminded to be humble because these folks, and there are many more, so if, if you were a guest and I didn't mention you yet or don't mention you, Please don't be offended. I can't go 62 times down the list here, folks. But reminded of um, not the great, just the great accomplishments, but the great commitment of people and the humanity of the folks I've had a chance to associate with. It, and what a blessing that has been for me. And what a reminder um, to be grateful for my life experiences, my friends, my travel, my family, uh, everything that I should be grateful for. And and I learned that from Think Tech. Uh, So I've learned how to find out another thing. I've learned how to find out the um, background of images. Are they um, public domain? Are they copyrighted? Are they somehow protected? (laughs) That sounds like a non sequitur, but I'll say this about Think Tech, the great organization that I mentioned earlier who hosts this, is there are absolute sticklers on doing things right. And that's why they still exist some 20-ish years later. So um, let me pause and do the obligatory and certainly appropriate acknowledgement of Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, that's who brought you Figment's the Power of Imagination. Please support them. Um, and you can find them, as you see, on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and find a lot of great content beyond Figments the Power of Imagination and Figments on Reality. So, Figments on Reality, I haven't talked much about, but um, at some point, maybe eight months into my Figments Think Tech journey, I decided I wanted to opine, just have an opinion show, not an interview or a storytelling show. And really, if I could do anything, if I, I, I wish I could do that about five minutes a day because I have a lot of opinions, and that's one reason. Two, I'm right, says me, or they wouldn't be my opinions. That's another reason. But more importantly, I think I'm able to do it in a way that is absolutely abs- uh, devoid of politics. Uh, politics matter. We have a political system, so we need politicians to execute that political system. No, I'm not sure they're doing a particularly good job of it e- either side uh, right now. But um, you know, th- be that being what it may, uh, I think a political commentary that is, is uh, objectively as possible examines tough issues like Afghanistan, like COVID like uh, Russia, Ukraine, um, North Korea, I think that's important. And there isn't enough of it. Everybody seems to have to take a side when it is our side, we should take our side, the American people and uh, the humanity of the world. So I enjoyed doing that. Uh, I will tell you that all the, the most popular episode in on reality and one of the most popular episodes period was uh my episode on the afghanistan withdrawal which was a debacle and there were mistakes made by multiple administrations go watch that uh, episode for a, a my review of those mistakes but understand i'm not blaming this administration but somebody should be blamed 
And my conclusion in that episode was we needed accountability. As of yet, we haven't had it. And that's wrong. Not a political commentary, but that that evacuation, that departure from Afghanistan was a debacle. The actual evacuation went well, and there's been a lot of self-congratulatory commentary uh, about that. Hey, what we ought not celebrate is how we got there. It was a debacle. People should have been fired. They weren't. And I think that's wrong. That seemed to resonate with Figment's on reality viewers. Um, so I, I think that kind of commentary is important. I wish I could do it in a manageable bite-sized chunk. Maybe I'll find a way going forward. But it wasn't all serious stuff. It wasn't all pandemic and, and strife. Uh, some of Figment's was just plain fun and it was a lot of fun. I like baseball. I love baseball. There might be a game on my TV in my home office right now. I could tell you the score, but I won't. And uh, my buddy Ross Rowley and I had a few shows where we looked at baseball. There's Ross and I on the golf course, but he's wearing his Cardinals colors and I'm in my Brewers uh, gay, uh, regalia. And um, he's an expert on baseball, a statistician, retired Air Force colonel. If you like baseball, watch especially the first episode with Ross. Imagining Better Baseball is the title of that one. And then I, I had on the show two of the most remarkable people I know, two of my favorite friends. There are no bests, right? All of us who have, are blessed with good friends, it's hard to have bests, and that's uh, Andre and Maria Jacques Maton on the right, holding one of their each three Emmys. They're the writers of Mad Men uh, in the first early years. Some of the writers, I, you know, that's it's a group endeavor, but they're holding the Emmys, so there's that. Um, and they talked about how they imagined what got to the screen. And who would have thought that I'd know folks like that? And so, Andre and Maria, you're always a blessing. It's always good to see you and talk to you. And I think the viewers, you'll enjoy uh, looking at that story, whether you've seen it before or not. And I like airplanes and I like fast cars. So I stumbled across, I think, through the miracle of Facebook and a small secret, uh, closed group of old fighter pods. That might be what it's called that uh, meet on Facebook. And I start, uh, stumbled across this guy or the guy who owns these two. Uh, modes of transportation, Greg Sembauer Blower. Sembauer has that P-51 Mustang, and we talked about that. The most beautiful airplane uh, the P-51 has ever built. I'm fortunate to have about 11 hours in the back seat of various P-51s. Uh, the Ferrari, not so crazy about it. I'm a Mustang guy of a different sort, but um, you want to know what it's like to own a real P-51 Mustang and fly it? Then watch the episode with Greg. So that brings me to the most popular episode of Figments, The Power of Imagination, ever. And I don't, I'm kind of surprised by this because, you know, you take a former chief of staff of the Air Force and tell that remarkable story. I think that's pretty striking. An astronaut, Emmy winners, things like that. Um, my daughter, of course, she should be the most popular one in my book. But what was the most popular one by far, by uh, double, I think, any other episode, the most popular uh, episode was a fighter pilot review of uh, Top Gun Maverick that I did with Dallas Thompson. That's me on the left in Iraq, uh, and I knew Dallas on the right uh, from his work supporting the Navy. I was with the land forces. So those pictures have nothing to do with Top Gun, but Dallas had flown the F-14, he'd flown the F-18, so he was perfectly qualified to talk about Top Gun, and um, our timing was good. By far, the most popular um, episode of Figment's Power of Imagination, so go watch the, if you haven't watched the movie yet, or if you're going to re-watch it now that it's had some time to settle on you, Watch the review first. There are no spoilers and some great insight for, um, for uh, your viewing pleasure. So, um, as I said, the commentary was good. I'd like to 
do that easier, find a way that I could just think, talk, think, talk, and like five minute burst. That's not, that's think, talk. That's not think tech. So it doesn't fit the model for think tech Hawaii. Uh, but we'll see what we can do. What I am going to do and what is really pulling me towards this is kind of like that. Let me first say that it's not just uh, the end of figments. There are a couple other roles that have mattered to me that that I'm stepping away from to allow time for the endeavors I'm going to discuss in a minute. I uh, recently resigned from the board of directors and as a vice president member of the executive committee at the Pearl Harbor Aviation Museum uh, here on Fort Island. It's a fantastic organization. I love that place. Um, Alejandra, my bride, still uh, serves, served on their scholarship. May will continue to be involved, but I need more time, and that that tells you that I have at least one and actually two things that I want to uh, focus on and do right. Actually, three things. Um, the first thing, if you watch Figments, you've seen several episodes about this, or at least know they're out there, and that is peace on the Korean Peninsula, lasting peace on the Korean Peninsula. This goes back to 2017 when I penned a prize-winning paper odd for a D student fighter pilot, D student English. Okay, I was a D student, several things, but especially English. Um, so I've been interested in this for years, but frankly, presenting my ideas on ThinkTech helped me, and on Figment's Power of Imagination, helped me think better and more about it. And um, that led to meeting some folks, uh, Christine Ahn, who was my last guest of Women Cross DMZ, Christine Ahn, last guest on Figments, and um, got me some notoriety, notoriety that allowed me to get an article published in the New York Times. And um, that has led to uh, big opportunities. There's that front page article. Yeah, front page. Yes, I am bragging, bragging with a purpose, though. But a lot has flowed from that. I have a chance to make a difference. It's something I care deeply about. I realize it's a quixotic pursuit, and I may just be tilting at windmills, but maybe not. And I'll sleep better at night if I try to end that stalemate. And that this matters to me in a quick thumbnail because in my mind, and I'm quite convinced of this and trying to convince others, Korea is the most dangerous nuclear case for one bad mistake away from a nuclear conflict. Um, two, we're there because of the stalemate. The armistice was signed 70 years ago this coming, well, next month, July 27, 1953. And not solving that problem, that the fact that we're technically still at war has enabled the North Korean nuclear advances. And, um, and the we need to pursue peace and reconciliation through a formal peace treaty. I believe that. So I've been spending some time in Washington, D.C. I'll be speaking at events surrounding the armistice there. And I want the government, our government, to aggressively pursue a peace treaty with North Korea. Very limited focus, not as a concession, not as appeasement, but from a position of strength. Because if we don't do that, we're not going to get anywhere on denuclearization. We're not going to get anywhere on human rights and the human condition in North Korea. And we're not going to get anywhere reconciling the wounds of war. And I've been in enough conflict zones to know you got to do that. So that is um, Endeavor 1 and my uh, top priority. Endeavor 2, I can't fully disco disclose, so I'll give you a little teaser. Now, there's something called honorary consuls, um, uh, where governments have an honorary, unofficial representative. Here in Hawaii, we have a councilor corps, and we've got representatives uh, from many countries, from Switzerland to Bangladesh to uh, Chile. Uh, and they perform some roles, uh, helping travelers, uh, representing the country unofficially during business or official visits and just being a presence for uh, with some formality for a country. Well, guess what? I'm going to be one of those. 
uh, at least the State Department has approved my appointment and the establishment of a counselor post. So sometime in coming weeks, we'll tell you what country it's for, but not today. I will say this, it's an Asian country and it's not North Korea. Um, so stand by for news on that, uh, that not as big a role uh, or as, sig as significant as the pursuit of peace with North Korea, but um, certainly not a small thing either. And I want to be able to do it right. I would also like to be able to uh, do life right. And, you know, that's a learning process, isn't it? For all of us who are in our 70s, but maybe somebody has it figured out. I still don't, but I want to make sure that I have time to work in the yard, to go on date nights, to play golf with Alejo, to do whatever with our uh, our crazy dog, Ace, uh, who is, by the way, he's he's getting better. He's officially been lifted from the terror watch list. So as he matures, he's not quite the the crazy dog that he has been. So I do want to live life right. And uh, to do that, you've got to choose carefully what you do. So I'm going to pursue peace with North Korea. I'm going to represent a government that our country needs a good, solid relationship with. More on that in the news. And uh, try to be a good husband, father, dog father, whatever. Um, and, and use the time I have remaining well. It has been a pleasure. Uh, to get feedback from those I know, some I don't know, to reacquaint as I did with Rotten Ron. Rotten Ron, I hope you're watching this final episode. One of my crew chiefs in the F-15 um, to hear, take some slings and arrows on my ideas and also get some reinforcement that, um, that the power of positive thinking has value, even in today's world. And I try to do that. So thanks again to Figments. Let's bring up the QR codes and I'll talk over them a little bit. That's where you can find it, or you can go to Think Tech Hawaii on the web uh, and look for all of the old episodes and look at some of the other things that have been presented by, uh, by other uh, hosts. It has been an honor to know you digitally and to try to share some of my life and some of my ideas with you. So with that, I bid you aloha and mahalo. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.